convene this press conference to register a strong condemnation over the fact that uh, the Chief Minister of Tripura, who heads the left-wing government in Tripura, was not allowed or his uh, speech on the day, on the Independence Day, a customary speech on the Independence Day. It was recorded by the Zubdarshan, but it was not shown and then it was, a letter was sent to him saying that they will be glad to show it only if he reshapes, this is the word they've used, he reshapes the text of his address. Now our objections to this are on two grounds. We have circulated both the text of the speech and the letter by the uh, Prasad Bharati authorities. Our objections to this are twofold. One, this is reminiscent not only of the emergency of Mrs. Indira Gandhi where there was press censorship of a very high, high level. But this has gone even further than that and it has become worse than that. I don't recollect during the period of internal emergency whether any elected chief minister of any state was disallowed from speaking on occasions of Independence Day or Republic Day. But what has been done is therefore this is a precursor for a very big authoritarian onslaught and a censorship of the media that this government is embarking upon which is completely not permissible and this will be fought and we will I mean, we'll have to struggle against this sort of authoritarianism. The second fact, the point on which we condemn this uh, step is that this is a gross interference in the rights of the states. In the Indian constitution, the constitutional scheme of things must be properly understood. Federalism is one of the fundamental features according to the Supreme Court of our constitution. The constitution rests on a, fundam a, a fundamental premise that the sovereignty of India lies with the people of India. That's why in the preamble we begin by saying we the people and we end the preamble by saying we enact, enact, adopt, we adopt and enact this constitution. The people exercise this sovereignty through the elected representatives. The members of parliament to which the central government is accountable are accountable to the people and the members of the state legislature are accountable to the people who hold the government of the state accountable to them. This is the linkage and the complete freedom in our constitution that the ruling parties at the centre and the ruling parties at the state will always be different. People will always elect on the basis of their choices which government they would want for their state and by imposing on the head of the state government conditions saying that only what is in consonance with the central government's understanding can be said by the chief minister of a state on an occasion like the Independence Day or Republic Day. This is tantamount to undermining the federal principles of our constitution and is actually an anti-constitutional act. So this is an attack on the rights of the states and we are therefore appealing to all non-BJP state governments to realize that this is how the things are being pushed forward. The bar is being pushed, the authoritarian bar. They are trying it out with the left wing government in Tripura and if the other non-BJP state governments do not, all of them, do not join together to resist this attack, then the center state relations and federalism as envisaged in our constitution is under a severe threat. Now this are the two reasons and this comes in the background of a very, very partisan approach of this government which has embarked on its own, I would say, a fascistic propaganda. The Vijay Dashmi speech of the RSS Sarvasan Chala is shown live on the Doordarshan nationally. On that there is no objection. He is not, a, is not an elected member, does not hold an elected office, 
he is not answerable to the people of India and therefore under the Indian constitution he is not accountable. But that speech would be nationally telecast. The RSS or the BJP's press conference on what they called, it is literally the kettle calling the pot black, when they allege that the RSS, I mean the attacks in Kerala, etc., and they make false falsehood attacks against RSS, the CPI. That press conference is shown live nationally. So what does this mean? that only one point of view will have to be shown to the people and that will be decided by the powers that be. The UP chief minister orders the UP police to observe Janmashtami on 15th of August through a written order. Police and the armed forces, we have always been clear in our country, are not subject to any unionization. Though some of us may suggest that, but then to tell them to observe one religious uh, festival. I mean, all this is happening is a blatant partisan misuse of the state machinery for furthering the ends of the RSS's fascistic objective of converting our secular democratic republic of India into their version of a rapidly intolerant Hindutva Russia. So this is uh, something we uh, are very, we strongly protest against this. And the head of the governments of each state and the centre have the right to speak. If there is anything that is objectionable in their speeches, they are accountable in their public fora. That is, the prime minister will be questioned in the parliament on what he said at the at the red forum. We will question him, I mean our comrades will question them. He said demonetization has been helpful and we have recovered and I mean something uh, to the tune of 1,75,000 crores of rupees in the banks are under the scanner. But first tell us Mr. Prime Minister how much money has come back through demonetization. Eight months have gone after the demonetization, 31st of December, till today. Till today, neither the Prime Minister, nor the Reserve Bank, nor anybody informs the country after the demonetization how much of that money of the old notes has come back to the system. So what is this claim of black money being er uh, eradicated? All the black money has been converted into white money. This is the biggest corruption scam that is going around. All the counterfeit money has been legalized. All the black money has been converted into white money. And you claim that it is a fight against corruption. Yes, we have objections to many of such things that the Prime Minister said. Kashmir. What he said about Kashmir, rephrasing all Kashmir is very good. I mean, we welcome. That should have been the approach. But if that was the case, Mr. Prime Minister, please tell us. Ten months ago, when the all-party delegation went to Kashmir, under the leadership of Mr. Rajnath Singh, you did Home Minister. We came back, had a meeting in Delhi and issued a communique. A communique read by the government to the media and through all of you to the country, where two things were promised. One, immediate confidence building measures for the Kashmiri youth, right from non-usage of the pellet guns, employment opportunities, etc., etc. And the second promise was the immediate initiation of a political dialogue, a political process of dialogue with all the stakeholders, all the stakeholders, underlined. Not one forward step was taken on either of these two. Is their own promise. Now when the Prime Minister says from the Rampai to the Red Fort that we should embrace all Kashmiri is very good. But first tell us why did you not implement your own promises? 
when the situation has come to this pass, if you have implemented your promises. So there are many things like this which, which uh, can be asked, but they'll be asked on the floor of the house. What the Chief Minister of Tripura would have said in his address, that would have been questioned in the floor of the Tripura Assembly. You cannot pre pre censure him or tell him that he cannot say that as long as there is no, nothing in, in the way which calls for a sedition or an overthrow of this constitutional order. That's why we think that this is a very, very ominous development. This is the precursor for the imposition of a ruthless authoritarian regime which will be much worse than the emergency of Mrs. Indra Gandhi. And it's accompanied by an equally ruthless campaign of propagating only the views of the RSS through the instances that I have told you. And through that, the entire opinion in the country and the information flowing to the people is sought to be manipulated and controlled in their own fashion for their purpose, which is not in the interest of India, the Indian Republic or the Indian Constitution. So this is something that we take it very seriously. We will be in touch with all the other non-Congress, uh, uh, I mean non-BJP uh, state governments and the chief ministers and we shall see how we will take this uh, forward. But this is not going to stop with only one condemnation like this. This will be a movement forward for defense of our central state relations and the federal content of our constitution.